In this video, uh, we shall solve a system of equations which has uh, infinitely many solutions. Now, there's no immediate way that you can tell um, that this system of equations has infinitely many solutions. So what we will do is just solve this system and it will eventually turn out that there are infinitely many solutions. So let's load the uh, linear algebra package here. And uh, let's define the uh, coefficient matrix like that. And also I want to define the augmented matrix like that. Uh, and the augmented matrix is just the coefficient, the coefficient matrix in which I included another column out here corresponding to this uh, column vector here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use uh, Gauss elimination on this uh, augmented matrix. Um, or rather row operations. Um, if you're familiar with this procedure, you can just skip ahead and uh, uh, you don't have to go through, go through all the steps. First we uh, provide a one, or maybe we should assign a name to this matrix like that. And then we uh, provide the first zero and the second row here. And then the next zero down here, like that. And now I would like to provide a leading one here in the diagonal. And now I would like to make this number zero. And that, whoops, look what happened. I got all zeros in this third row here. So what this mean is, means is that we have uh, three variables or three unknowns, but we only have two equations or two restrictions for these variables. That means we have one variable that can uh, vary freely. Uh, we could call it a parameter that's, uh, that we can set uh, freely. And it also means that eventually our solution is going to be expressed in terms of a free parameter. Conventionally, we will call this parameter t, t1, t2, if there are more of them. But actually, we're not quite done with this um, elimination process yet. I'm still able to provide a zero here or here, and I'll choose to provide a zero here so that uh, that there will, will be a dependence between my x2 variable and my x3 and my x1 and my x3. So I'll try to remove this minus a half here. Like that. So what we have here is uh, if we turn back to our original, original set of equations uh, we'll remind ourselves that these are x1s, these are x2s, these are x3s. So what our result actually tells us is that x1 is equal to 5 minus 8x3. Because you have to remember there's an equal uh, sign in between these two columns here. So let's write that out. So these are the three equations we've ended up with, or rather two equations actually, because the the third one here is uh, trivial. Trivial. Um, so one x plus eight x one x one plus eight x three equals five, and one x two plus thirteen x three equals eight. Now this can be uh, rearranged uh, to give the following. 
So we uh, subtracted the 8x3 to the right-hand side of the equation and the 13x3 to the right-hand side of the equation. And these <clears throat> two equations actually define a straight line in space. Now that may not be very easy for you to see, but let's try to rename this variable x3. Let's just call it t, which is conventional for a parameter. And we'll add a third equation, which just gives us uh, this new definition. I'll just uh, copy paste this. And it's supposed to be x3, which is now t. So it's just this substitution. From now on, we call x3 t. And uh, this gives us a trivial, trivial uh, equation down here. Now we may arrange this a little bit further. Mm. Into this notation where we have the x1, x2, x3 equals this vector or point in space. It's a three dimensional point plus um, our t shouldn't be t3 here, it should be just t times this vector, um, which is what we would call a directional vector. So what it says is that my my solution points, because my solutions are, we can think of a solution as a point in three-dimensional space, x1, x2, x3. So these points are arranged on a straight line defined by this point and this directional vector. So I can choose any value for t, and that will provide me with a new solution. There are infinitely many solutions to this system. So say I choose t to be the number two, then I can just calculate what my x1, x2, x3 will be. Let's do that. So I get five minus, or five plus two times minus eight. That should be minus 11, and in this case I get 8 plus 2 times minus 13, that should be minus 18, and here I get 0 plus 2 times 1, that's 2. So these three numbers here, they constitute one solution for my set of equations up here that I started out with, this set of equations here. Um, and as you can see, I can generate infinitely many solutions just by choosing some number for the, for the parameter t here. And uh, one final thing, uh, in the beginning of the video, I said that there was no immediate way to to discover that uh, this system of equations has infinitely many solutions? Well, I could check the rank of this coefficient matrix and the augmented rate uh, matrix and see what that is. So let's try to do that. So I'll use the uh, rank command. I'll do it for the coefficient matrix first. And Mabel tells me that it has rank 2. And what about the um, augmented matrix? It has rank 2 as well. So in this case, our coefficient matrix and our augmented matrix have the same rank. However, this rank is less than the number of unknowns or variables in our system of equations and that indicates that there's going to be an infinite uh, amount of solutions. So when the coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix have the same rank and this rank is less than the number of 
variables in the system, we're going to be having infinitely many solutions. That's it for now.